Good evening, church family. I'm here with Pastor David Holcomb, who brought us the message this past Sunday. And uh, we want to thank you for joining us for another episode of Pastor, What Did You Mean? Mm. So, David, this past Sunday, we're in the book of Galatians. Galatians, yeah. Which, uh, it's only six chapters. It can kind of like, uh, well, what was, you know, what's the order? Is it, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians? They kind of (laughs) just kind of going to get blended together. Yeah, yeah. But what makes Galatians unique? Well, there's, well... First off, most believe that Galatians uh, is the first or earliest letter of Paul that, uh, that we have in Scripture. And so I think its timing is such that, uh, you know, it's, he finishes his first missionary journey. And it's interesting because that would place it at like 49 AD. Mm-hmm. And then Jerusalem Council happens in Acts. And he's, he's actually um, defending much of what he writes in the letter at the Jerusalem Council. So you've got that. You've got the dating. This could be the earliest that we have of Paul. Uh, you've got that there's no, there's no commendation in Galatians. So there's no, hey, attaboy, uh, you guys are doing well. Uh, this, is, this is, I think, the only letter that's sort of void of all that. Uh, and, and it's so harsh. I know it's for certain probably the most harsh uh, of the letters. But, um, yeah, you know, just all of that sort of uh, makes it especially interesting. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I think, like you said, six chapters we're getting into these books yeah. that are personal letters and um, meaning, you know, I think I always encourage folks that uh, when you get to these letters for certain, these should be read in one sitting, right? You read it as a letter. We've put in mm-hmm. chapters and verses, but if this was just as received in the mail, you would sit down and you'd kind of read through the whole letter. And um, so this is also, you know, something that you start to able to mm-hmm. do once you get to Galatians. But um yeah, some, some, some really interesting things about the letter itself. Um, it's not, you know, Scripture doesn't record Paul's letters, or our canon doesn't include Paul's letters chronologically, um, but um, really by size after Romans on. Mm-hmm. But um, if you're thinking about, all right, let's, let's sort of follow Paul. He's starting to develop theology. He's starting to figure out, you know, what's important. He's a little more fiery. I think you suggested that to me last week. I don't know. It's like, did he did he calm down? You know, did age and wear and all that <laughs> play out on by the time you know uh, he gets to, to writing Timothy at all in prison and uh, he's these, a little more mellow, a little mellow maybe. But he's come to uh, <laughs> people have come to disappoint him yeah. over and over again, and he expects it maybe more. I don't know. Could be, but this is definitely he is he is ready to go in Galatians, and uh, we see it throughout, and so uh, it definitely makes it. Uh, uh, and we're going to be going to Ephesians next week, and it's yeah. almost like this direct opposite. Mm-hmm. So, um, but um, yeah, I, I think I, you know that's what I what I think about with Galatians. Okay. I don't know about yourself. But. Well, I'm I'm curious if if we don't answer this yeah. later, will you come back to this at the very end? Okay, all right. So you said he's harsh in this letter, yeah. And as I think about you know kind of what's going on in these churches in the Gal- in the area of Galatia, right? Um, is as I would kind of evaluate the seriousness of the sin, it just it doesn't seem like what they were doing was as bad as what the people in Corinth and were the doing. Corinthians, yeah. And, 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 and so you would think he would be way more harsh there. I mean, mm. this is, you've got sexual immorality. You, you, you've got, yeah. there's a lack of unity. I, I'm, I'm wondering why um, he was yeah. so harsh on the Galatians. What, what was it that really upset him? Well, you know, I, I referenced it as um, legalistic foolishness. So, you know, ultimately legalism. But yeah. um, And you said there's two kinds. There's two kinds. And I think really, if you want to sort of break down even legalism further to what Paul, what, you know, what mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit working through Paul was that it was, it was tampering with the gospel, mm. the integrity of the gospel. Mm. And in Paul's eyes and, and really for us, you know, I believe should be the same. Yeah. Um, tampering, distorting, presenting any other mm-hmm. gospel than his truth mm-hmm. is likely one of the most, um, you know, severe, yes. um, you know, uh, you know, things we can do mm-hmm. uh, with truth. It's um, certainly. I mean, he 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 lets the Corinthians know that you got to stop. Come yeah. on now, you know that's. It, but at this point, it's like, ha, oh, you know, this is this is worse than what they're doing, uh, even though none of it's good, mm-hmm. and it's because it's it's uh, it's impacting the integrity of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and when you think about it, so you said the two kinds, right, of, of legalism, yeah. of foolishness. The first two chapters of the Galatians, Paul's addressing the idea of uh, legalism or the foolishness of, of uh, how we come to our salvation, justification. Mm-hmm. So legalistic justification. 
And then he's reminding the Galatians of what they've now transferred into being legalism, uh, legalistic sanctification. And so really, uh, you know, I think Paul and I think, um, I think Ford like Martin Luther. I think Luther would find that the Reformation was really an aspect of addressing the justification that had become sort of this legalized um, faith plus, mm -hmm. and then the sanctification uh, that had become this legalized, um, really, uh, plus only, <laughs> you know, yeah. works only. Uh, yeah. And um, Paul's addressing it right here 1,600 years before you know, mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther does. But uh, that's really, I think, what we see in Galatians is um, those two key areas or key aspects of legalism we have to, um, we have to be aware of, we have to understand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what I like about this is that it's um, a word for those who have not yet come to a, uh, a place of, of confession yeah. of belief, uh, who, are, who are unbelievers, mm -hmm. yeah. um, sort of a, a warning of how to speak into them yeah. or not to speak into them, and then a warning for those who have come to faith mm. in Christ and, and how to both yeah. instruct and live out that yeah. faith. So we see it both. Mm -hmm. We see both aspects yeah. of legalistic foolishness in Galatians. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I like that word tampering. You're tampering with yeah. the gospel. Yeah, and, it, and it's um, you know, this is God gave it to us. You know, signed, yeah. sealed, delivered, and then when we go and we we dilute it, we change it a little mm -hmm. bit. It's not just that. It's ultimately we're robbing God of yeah. some of His glory yeah. because when you tinker with it, you're no longer yeah. enabling Him to be both. You know the just and the justifier. Yeah, and and it's uh, you're, you're, go, ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, and that's I mean that and Paul. See, this is why again, why it's so hard. Um, that's the slippery slope, right? Well, just a little bit. You know, no, we still we're saved, but uh, we're approaching our sanctification this way. It, it should be okay, yeah. right, Paul? No, 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 no. That's distorting it just even enough that uh, from here on out, who knows? You know, yeah. who, what sort of belief you you fall into? Because when you add even just this much works into it. Yeah. What happens is, I think, and when you go to sit there and you go to sing Amazing Grace, uh, well, it's like, oh, is it that amazing? I mean, I did yeah, some of this, and right. God say, no, no, no room for any of that. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to say, and can it be, you know, that I should, I mean, it's, it's got to be, because He yeah. did all of it, and it's... Well, and to, to that point, I think uh, really a, a good word picture for us is uh, on the cross, you know, Jesus said, it is finished. Mm. Yeah. And to me, that it is finished means it is complete. Yeah. And, and that's where we see, all right, at that point, that His righteousness merited to us without anything yeah. we do. And mm -hmm. I think that's really what, what Paul's getting at as well. And um, like he told, back to the Corinthians in the end of 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. you know, like he said, is if it wasn't finished, if it wasn't completed, if it wasn't enough by itself, mm -hmm. then Christ's death is meaningless. Yep. It's, you know, there's there's nothing to it if it wasn't enough alone, mm -hmm. and yeah, um, yeah that's, that's a that's good. It's a good word. Yeah. So let, let's trace out for a minute. You drop two words on us that okay we normally yeah. don't use in just our everyday parlance: yeah. justification, sanctification. Yeah. Two, Tease those out for us real quick. Two important words, and not trying to get it into our everyday vocabulary necessarily, but um, you know we see them throughout Scripture. And, and I think, so it's easy, let's start high level, right? Yeah. Justified um, is really uh, that process, that act of God by way that we are now made right before Him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I said yesterday, one way to think about it is um, justification. Mm -hmm. uh, when, that, when we yeah. confess and believe, it is just as if mm -hmm. we never sinned. Yeah. We are now made uh, yeah. righteous before God. So sa sa our salvation moment. Mm -hmm. right? Sanctification is now what happens next. Mm -hmm. um, literally. To mm -hmm. be set apart, yeah, for His purposes. Mm -hmm. So it's God's act in us and and, and His Spirit in mm -hmm. us now, as someone set set apart. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus would say in uh, John seventeen seventeen uh, that uh, they are not of the world. Sanctify them mm -hmm. in the Word, in yeah. the truth. You know, yeah. set continue to set them apart. Yeah. Um, I think, of, and, and we see it. Through, you know, I see. Um, is it uh, the First yeah. Thessalonians, right? Um, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Um, let's see. You're talking about God's will for us. Uh, in, those in Christ who are Jesus, asleep, that we would be saint. That you grieve no help. Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, keep going. That we be sanctified. <laughs> that we be so, sanctified. So why he's now, looking God for that. Himself, sanctify you completely, yeah. right? And, and move you forward, exactly. Um, 
Over and over, we see it. So justification, you say it's this declaration, uh, that's instantaneous? I mean, it's, it's a one-time event, right? And, and justification, absolutely. And yes. sanctification, that's, that's more of like a process. It's an ongoing thing, right? It's, it's an ongoing thing. It's a, uh, it's a maturing. You know, we say in discipleship that um, it, we just, we, we could move a step closer mm -hmm. to being more Christ-like today than we were yesterday. Yeah. That's the process of maturity. Mm -hmm. um, Paul tells us in Colossians, yeah. you know, that that's our aim, that in, mm -hmm. in Christ, that's why we teach, that's why we instruct, mm -hmm. uh, so that we may uh, become yeah. more Christ-like. We may be present you mm -hmm. more, more Christ-like, more yeah. mature. Um, and so that's the sanctification yeah. process. And um, yeah, and both can be approached legalistically. Okay, so we're going to get yeah. to that in a second. So, yep. so justification, we're, we're declared uh, to be free from the penalty of sin. Now, that's sanctification... Right. It's a, it's a continual, it's a process of being set free from the, the power of sin in our life. It, yes, and I think by definition, sanctification is to be set apart for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not necessarily, this sort of gets at the, well, I can be holy and I'll just be removed from the world, but for a purpose to then uh, yeah. to be more holy, to be about God's love and mission mm -hmm. and, and purpose in this world. Yeah, the aim of this discipleship is love that comes from a sincere right. heart and a pure faith. That's right. Um, so legalistic sanctification. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. Yeah, no, no, go, um, go. But yeah. I want to know, give us some contemporary examples. What might this look mm. like in the church? The, How could we yeah. inadvertently be guilty of being just like the foolish Galatians. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I do think it, it is um, the motivation of the heart. It's our motives, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where, where are we? Um, are they aimed at the gospel itself, as far as the motive? Or are they aimed at um, a distorted gospel, mm -hmm. which would say I have to do anything? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we think back in Galatians. I know you say contemporary, but just sort of sets the stage. Yeah, we could go back yeah. in Galatians. It was really the idea that they were now. Um, they had fell victim to the idea that they must be circumcised. Yeah. You know, they, they must follow mm -hmm. a certain diet. Uh, yeah. They must follow a certain prayer. They must worship with a certain ritual. And in and of themselves, yeah. those aren't bad things, mm -hmm. right? God called people at one point to do them. There's still yeah. a way of maybe worshiping in that way. Um, and so we think about, all right, what might that look like today? And I think that's any sort of have to in order to remain in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. In order to increase our our uh, position before God, uh, in order to to grow yeah. in relationship to God, any any performance based work mm -hmm. uh, in which we feel like that must be done yeah. or this won't happen. Mm -hmm. um, it got there's an association of God's love for us if we don't do this yeah. thing. Certainly, you know what Luther encountered is what some of us still yeah. encounter. You know, uh, uh -huh. penance or you know certain ritualistic mm -hmm. prayers that might yeah. look like, uh, but it could be any number of things. Yeah, um, it could be how much I know compared to someone else, or yeah. you know, I could be positioning myself uh, legalistically to yeah. someone else based on yeah. you know, am I a better Christian or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and really, that's at the end. That's what the Galatians, Paul says. Yeah. Look, these teachers have it over you now. Mm -hmm. They feel important because they've positioned themselves, and you're now working yeah. to become them. Yeah. So anytime that we're saying, well, if I work harder, I'll yeah. be thought of more importantly, yeah. particularly in the church or before God, legalistic sanctification. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and I think that's really the, the real concern is, um, I mean, we see it, and we've probably all been guilty of it, but um, how easy it is whenever it's performance-based, yeah. naturally performance means I'm comparing to someone else. You know, I think in our fallen state, mm -hmm. if I have to, if I'm performing in order to achieve something, yeah. I almost always say, "Well, yeah. how am I doing compared to someone else?" And uh, that becomes real um, yeah. divisive as well. I mean, it, it really breaks the unity of a church um, yeah. when everyone's trying to outperform yeah. someone else. When mm -hmm. when Scripture tells us that we're really called yeah. to just out love. One another. Yeah. <laughs> if we're, you know, if, and that yeah. love is motivated by yeah. a gospel uh, motivation, uh, yeah. that's the only out something else we ought to do yeah. to someone else is, uh, you know, out, out love. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and, and um, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. That might be a long way around. All right. But, so, so, next yeah. to last question here. Okay. Um, yeah. 
I just I wanted to press in on the one thing you said so I don't okay. so somebody doesn't misunderstand you. Oh, and like, please. Hey, you know, I don't feel like going to church this morning. So David said I don't have to go. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, I really, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I, I feel like giving right now. I don't know if I can give with a mm. joyful heart. God mm. loves a joyful heart. So a cheerful giver, maybe I just shouldn't give. Or, you know, I really don't feel like witnessing right now. I don't feel like sharing. I know, mm. I know there's a nudge, but I, how is that different yeah. from... Well, Paul would go on in Galatians, yeah. the last two chapters is really his defense that freedom from the law is not lawlessness. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I think he, he establishes it on, are our eyes on Christ? Yeah. And if they are, then we are totally motivated to be in obedience to Christ. Yeah. And, and then, you know, this is where Paul and James are really uh, hand in hand. They're not counter. Mm -hmm. You know, James says faith without works yeah. is dead. Paul would say the same thing. Uh, he would just say that, that 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 works come by way of a genuine faith, and that genuine yeah. faith is eyes on Christ. So when we are genuine and saved, there may be times that we don't want to, but we still should. It's the it's really the the difference between I don't feel like or I don't want is am I really is am I sensing that I have to? Right? Again, it's it's a little bit semantic on that, but um, you know, if uh, if we're genuinely saved, yeah. And we're sort of in this up and down valleys. Uh, no, I encourage you to continue yeah. uh, moving forward, working yeah. your way, praying for the motivation to uh, mm -hmm. to be there Sunday, to because you know that's that's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, but again, the the legalism comes by way of mm -hmm. this was going to result in something for me, selfishly. This is going to result in something in my relationship, yeah. remaining in relationship with God if I check these five things. Mm -hmm. And if that's what I'm totally motivated by, I have to realize that I don't have the true gospel. Uh, I'm not pursuing the true sanctification as outlined in mm -hmm. the gospel. Yeah. Um, but um, all I, again, all I would just say is that when, when we have our eyes on Christ, yeah. we're motivated by the gospel with genuine salvation, mm -hmm. pursuing um, Christ-like sanctification mm -hmm. as described in Freedom from the Law 5 and 6, mm -hmm. um, we know, we, we know. And if, um, um, you know, I think that uh, the conviction of the Holy Spirit yeah. is, is a positive in yeah. our lives as well. Yeah. Uh, but um, there's, a, there's a definite, distinct line between um, sort of this feeling aspect and then the, the legalistic aspect mm -hmm. of, of um, yeah. how I interpret what I need to do yeah. as a works-based performance base. Spiritual disciplines can be a good thing. Oh, right? no doubt. That, but but that doing doubt. something for legalistic reasons. That's it's, it's not, motive of the that's, heart. And that's, that's just yeah. What's the motivation? Mm -hmm. And uh, is it a plus is my faith enough in Christ to for me to be sanctified in Christ? Is my faith enough to be set apart in Christ? Mm -hmm. And if it is, then I am moved to obey him and it will naturally yeah. the the outworking will naturally yeah. be worship and prayer and giving yeah. and, and service and community. Mm -hmm. If I don't think my faith enough is alone and it has to be what I do, well, it's like, it's like all of us, right? If, if um, in our relationships with our wives or our girlfriends or um, if we feel like there are things we have, to, eventually there's some bitterness that sort of seeps in, right? There's, if, if we feel like the only way she's going to love me is if I do something, mm -hmm. That's not going to work long term. There's there's yeah. no growth in that relationship, mm -hmm. but because I know she loves me, and and God has ordained it if it's a husband wife, but I know it's love at the core of this. Mm -hmm. Then I want to just build into. Her. Yeah. I want to take her flowers. I, you know, I want yeah. to. I, it's not going to change how much she loves me. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to grow our relationship more yeah. solidly. Yeah. Um, that's that's good. That's I mean, good. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so Paul uses a really harsh word oh, yeah. in Galatians. He says, uh, oh, foolish Galatians, yeah. who has bewitched you? Word mm -hmm. comes up again. Yeah. Um, yeah. You talked a little bit about some uh, some contemporary fools, you know, yeah. the lovable Different type. Homer yeah. Simpson, oh, the yeah. Barney. Um, yeah, but can, can you channel for us your inner <laughs> Mr. T? <laughs> Yeah, so Give it to us. So well, in con I don't even context, but uh, yeah, you know the types of fools. So the the one that's always headed for for danger, right? And we just shake our head. Wait, it's like you know he just he or yeah. she just said and avoided. And um, boy, I don't know if I've ever been on the spot for uh, uh, Mr. T. Mr. All apologies beforehand, but uh, yeah, I uh, I pity <laughs> I pity the fool. <laughs> Pity the fool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Sorry, Brett, on sound right here. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> There's a better Mr. T out there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even wear the, the jewelry today either. So. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to the mohawk next Sunday. Yeah, right? that's the, right. Just the, the haircut. Jewelry. Just the haircut. Yeah, that's right. well, thanks for being with us, David. Thanks oh, for the well, good word this past it. Sunday. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, church family, we look forward to seeing you next Monday for another episode of uh, Pastor, What Did You Beat? Yeah, that's right. We'll be back with Ephesians. Have a blessed week.